In this, the last screencast of my series of screencasts on algorithms, we're going to look at approximation algorithms for addressing NP-hard problems. And we've been following a trip to the northwestern Hawaiian Islands. Uh, now we've hit uh, heavy weather. We're crashing through the big waves of NP-hard problems and hightailing it back to Honolulu. So we're back in Honolulu where we have left you, the new employee of research and development in IT or the Reddit company, explaining to your boss why you can't find optimal configurations of the iThingies that you're selling because it's an instance of an MP hard problem and none of these famous computer scientists have been able to find an efficient solution to that problem. But your boss says, well, what do we do? We got to do something. Well, you have three options. One, Basically, suck it up. Stick with small problems. So maybe if you only have to do uh, n of size 10 or 15, you can use an exponential algorithm and it'll be okay. That's often not acceptable. Another possibility is to find special cases that can be solved in polynomial time. Possibly, you can come up with um, versions of your problem that are more restricted for which polynomial time algorithms exist. But that doesn't always work out. Uh, so the third option is what we're going to focus on today, which is we're going to accept near optimal solutions, which we find with approximation algorithms. And we're going to see that there's actually uh, several different ways to do this. And the three ways we'll look at today will include using clever heuristics or use a linear program approximation. Or finally, if you get lucky, sometimes random solutions work. Kind of surprising fact. OK, let's dive in. So first, just a few quick definitions. We're going to use C to represent the cost of a solution for our optimization problem of size n. And we're going to use C star to be the optimal solution. Now we're going to use rho of n to be what we call an approximation ratio. So if, for example, we have a minimization problem, then we're going to say that c over c star is bounded by rho of n this way. So that means that this is the factor by which the actual solution obtained is larger than the optimal solution. We're trying to minimize but we weren't good enough, c was bigger. So rho is always bigger than uh, 1 here, or bounded from below by 1. Uh, 1 would be perfect appro approximation, where you're getting the optimal solution. And then maximization would be the flip side. We would have c star over c. So here is the factor by which the optimal solution is larger than the solution obtained. We're trying to maximize some value and our solution wasn't quite big enough. So again, this will always be uh, bounded from below by 1. When we're doing approximations, that will usually be larger than 1. So the row here gives us the ratio by which we have approximated a problem. And today's example's row will be 2. We're going to look at solutions that are no more than twice as bad as the optimal solution. And there's a lot more about this in the uh, CLRS text on uh, polynomial approximation schemes and so on that I'm not going to talk about today. So it's still pretty rough out there. What can we do about these MP-hard problems? So first, we're going to look at the strategy of constructing custom algorithms that use heuristics specific to the problem being solved. And we're going to look at vertex cover and traveling salesman. The vertex cover minimization problem is to find a, a vertex cover of minimum size, where vertex cover is a subset of the vertices that touch all of the edges. So there's a surprisingly simple algorithm for doing this, which is shown here. Uh, we initialize our cover to the empty set. We initialize a copy of all the edges, E prime. And while that copy of the edges is not empty, we just pick any edge out of there, which will have endpoints U and V. And we will add U and V to our, our cover. So there's, this just says take uh, C, the current cover, and union it with the set U and V and then remove from E prime every edge that touches U and V because they've all been taken care of. Go back up here again, find another edge, 
which by virtue of line six will involve two more vertices that cover edges that haven't been covered yet and repeat until the edge set goes empty. So to illustrate this, let's suppose uh, we're running on this graph here. So we initialize E prime to all the edges. And let's suppose on the first iteration, we choose uh, this edge here. That means we're now going to include um, A and B in our cover. Uh, so C will be A and B. And we'll remove con from consideration all the edges that touch A and B. So we're no longer going to consider any of these edges here. Then we're going to repeat. And let's say we choose next this edge here. So we're going to add E and F to the vertex cover. And we're going to remove from consideration any edges that touch them. And then repeat again. And let's say we choose, well, there's only one edge left, which involves C and G. And so now we have a vertex cover of size 6. Well, what is the optimal vertex cover for this graph? How does that compare to the optimal? Well, we could have actually covered all the edges in the graph by picking this one, this one, and this one, which is a vertex cover of size 3. So the one we've just found is twice as big as it has to be. Now here I've edited out a discussion of how the additional heuristic of always choosing edges with the highest degree vertex first does sometimes improve things, but doesn't always, it doesn't always get you optimal. Uh, but we're just going to go on to discussion of the algorithm presented here. But let's return to this original algorithm here, and let's show that this is a polynomial time two approximation algorithm for vertex cover. So we need to show that it makes a vertex cover. In other words, it's correct that it runs in polynomial time, and it's no worse than twice as bad as the optimal solution. Well, the algorithm is correct because the while loop will iterate until every edge has been covered. Uh, it puts all the edges in there to start with, and it doesn't remove them until we've picked vertices that cover them. So it does create a vertex cover. The runtime, we can do aggregate analysis. We've got, at most, order of E iterations here because some of the edges may be removed in here so it might be less but we know it's bounded from above by order of the iterations and we've got it uh, let me write that down and we got at most order of, of v vertices are involved in these union unions here and we know that we can do unions fairly quickly so we just have to count how many union operations there are so it turns out the whole thing is order of e plus v so that's polynomial. So it's correct, it's polynomial. Now we just have to show that it's no worse than 2. The row is, is 2. The approximation ratio is 2. So let's let A be the set of edges that is chosen in line 4 here. Uh, now, by virtue of the algorithm, every time you choose an edge you, and add its two vertices to C, you remove all other edges that are touching it. So no two edges in A share a vertex. So in order to cover A, the size of the optimal solution must be at least, uh, at least the size of A, because there has to be one vertex in the optimal solution covering each edge in A, because none of the edges in A are overlapping on the same vertex. So that gives us one bound. Now, if we look at uh, line 4, each execution of line 4 picks an edge for which neither endpoint is yet in C, because we always remove from the E prime set all the edges that are touching the two vertices that we just put in the C. So we have the size of C is going to be twice the size of A. Put a comma there, because that's a different formula. And this is true because each edge that we chose and put in A, it has two endpoints. And so th those two endpoints are counted as part of the uh, vertex covering set. So of course, putting all of this together, we get C is less than or equal to 2 of C star. And that's what we set out to prove, that this is a two approximation algorithm that the solution it produces is no worse than twice of the um, C star. So a prox vertex cover is a two approximation 
algorithm for vertex cover minimization. Well, the storm's calming down a bit. Let's look at another example of how we can do a custom designed algorithm using a heuristic to do an approximation for an MP hard problem. Specifically, let's look at the tra traveling salesperson problem. As a minimization problem, the problem is to minimize the cost of a, of a tour, which we represent here with A, which is the sum of the cost of all the edges in the cycle A. It turns out, as proven in the text, that there is no good approximation to the general traveling salesperson problem, but we can get an approximation if we have the triangle inequality. And that's based on the idea that the cost to go direct from one vertex to another vertex cannot be any more than the cost to go to it via a third vertex. This, of course, is normally true in the physical world in Euclidean space. It is possible to define graphs for which this is not true. So we need to explicitly restrict our consideration to this. So we write this out formally by saying that the cost from u to v is less than or equal to the cost from u to w and the cost from w to v. Given the triangle inequality, this approximation is possible. We just select some vertex, we compute a minimum spanning tree from that vertex, and then we're going to walk around that minimum spanning tree to generate a sequence of vertices from which we will construct the Hamiltonian cycle. In the TSP, the graph is always complete. There's always an edge between every pair of vertices, so for any pair of vertices, we know that there's going to be an edge there that we can select. So let's look at that, how that might work here. Let's say we start at vertex A, and we compute a minimum spanning tree, and it turns out to go like this. We're using prims, but this should also work with other. Any MST algorithm should work. OK, so there's our minimum spanning tree. Now we know a minimum spanning tree has to be a lower bound on the cost of the optimal TSP solution because you know, an optimal TSP solution can be turned into a spanning tree by deleting an edge. And if that was actually cheaper than the minimal spanning tree, that would contradict the assumption that this is a minimal spanning tree. So this has to be a lower bound on the cost of the TSP. And we're actually going to pay the cost of double, no more than double the number of edges in this thing. Uh, so that's going to give us our two approximation. And it's going to work like this. We're going to start and walk around this thing here and visit each node printing out its its name in order. So we're going to go A, and then we go to B. Uh, so we're walking around like this. and We print out the name of each node as we go. So that makes the whole cycle. So then we're going to see C, and then we go back to B, and then we go to H, and then we go back to B again, and then to A, and D, E, F, E, G, E, D, A. Now this defines a walk around the graph, but it's not a cycle because we're repeating vertices. And we'll deal with that in a second. But first notice again, if we put an edge between every pair of vertices here, we are paying no more than twice the cost of the optimal TSP solution because again, the minimum spanning tree is a lower bound on the optimal TSP solution. And so paying the cost of twice the minimum spanning tree by walking down each edge and then back again, as I've done here, can't be more than twice the cost of the traveling salesperson cycle. But we need to turn this into a legal solution, and that's where the triangle inequality comes in. Here we're going from A to B to C, then back via B to get to H. Why don't we just knock out that B there and by the triangle inequality, it can't cost any more, uh, and it can possibly cost less to go from C directly to H rather than C, B, H. That's what this thing here says. So let's write that out. Let's, the order, the vertices in the order they're first encountered, A, B, C, H, we've already seen those, D, E, F, but we don't go back to E, G, we don't go back to E, we don't go back to D, but now we complete the cycle back at A. 
Uh, so there's the proposed cycle. And here's a slightly cleaner looking version of it. This is what the cycle looks like. And then if we compare it to the optimal solution, in comparing it to the optimal solution, this is the optimal solution on the right, uh, it turns out that this one is, is fairly close. The cost in this particular example is about 14.7 here, and it's about 19 over here. So how do we show that this approximation is a polynomial time two approximation algorithm for TSP with triangle inequality? Well, first, the algorithm is correct because it produces a Hamiltonian circuit. This is a Hamiltonian circuit. It does visit each vertex once and returns to the original vertex. We know it's polynomial time because the most expensive operation here is this, which is Prim's algorithm, which is order of E log V. And so it's polynomial. So we just have to show uh, that it's a two approximation. And for this, we've already noted that the cost of the tree that we found, the original spanning tree, is a lower bound on the cost of the alt optimal solution, which will designate H star. Uh, we also notice that the cost of the walk, which was the visiting every edge twice thing, which was not a Hamiltonian circuit, it was exactly twice the cost of the tree because we visited every edge twice. But then we constructed a Hamiltonian circuit by deleting some of the vertices, uh, which by the triangle inequality cannot make it more expensive. So the cost of our Hamiltonian circuit then has to be less than the cost, less than or equal to the cost of the walk before we deleted some vertices. And just plugging in this equation here, up there we get 2CT, we've already written that down, and uh, we already have CT here, so it's less than or equal to 2CH star, which is what we wanted to prove. We've proven that the cost of our walk can't be any greater than twice the cost of the optimal solution. So this is a polynomial time two approximation algorithm for TSP with triangle inequality. Another algorithm that you can use is a closest point heur heuristic where you make a trivial cycle starting with one vertex and then you it's a greedy algorithm you keep adding vertices you find the next closest vertex not on the cycle and attach it to the, the uh, closest vertex in the set in the cycle you've already created. But the general traveling salesman per salesperson problem without the triangle inequality uh, doesn't have a approximation algorithm for any ratio row. And there's a proof in the text by contradiction showing that you can model the Hamiltonian cycle problem with this problem such that for any row, if you can solve it in polynomial time, then you can solve the Hamiltonian cycle in polynomial time. So that would only be possible if P was equal to NP, which we generally don't believe. So for brevity, we'll wrap this screencast up here and then in the next screencast, we'll continue approximation algorithms looking at two other strategies.